many instrumentalists in the classical music world cannot afford the tools of their trade. A lot of the violinists made by Stradivari, Granieri, Amati, Viom are almost inaccessible because they just cost too much money to pay for one. As a matter of fact, there are just a handful of violinists in the world that own their Stradivari outright. Which begs the question to a lot of violinists who are trying to advance their career in classical music, is it even possible to own even a sliver a sliver of these instruments and these values. Well, this new company that I was researching recently called Strumenti really think that you can own a part of a violin. By the way, the information that I'm about to provide is just for entertainment purposes only. This is in no way, shape or form financial advice for you. Think of it like investing in a mutual fund. You put some money into the fund and you are part owner of the fund as a result. But before we get into the details of Strumenti, I want to thank today's video sponsor Banzoogle. And this is very exciting for me because I'm a huge fan of Banzoogle and I'm so grateful to have them as a partner on the channel. And what Banzoogle is, is a website hosting platform that is designed specifically for bands and musicians. And I don't want to bring this to the attention of classical musicians because I feel like just because it says Banzoogle doesn't mean that it's just for bands. It's also for classical musicians. And what I love about Banzoogle is that you have a variety of ways to monetize your brand, your music company through this website. And Banzoogle offers many different ways to diversify your income. So I encourage you to check out Banzoogle and as my gift to you with part with the partnership of Banzoogle, I want to give you 15% off the full annual fee for Banzoogle because I love my audience. I love my subscribers. I try to give so much value to you guys. So check out Banzoogle down in the description below. Use promo code ERICVIOLIN for you to get your 15% off your first annual subscription. A common problem for musicians is that they cannot afford the tools of their trade as I said in the beginning of the video. So a lot of these institutions, banks, foundations have enough cash and enough capital to purchase these instruments. And some of the time they go into museums for, you know, for public viewing. And sometimes they go into private collections, you know, from sometimes a private investor will use that as a wealth management tool to keep that instrument, you know, in their private possession. Very rarely sometimes do you see, you know, musicians going to private collectors and to you know, play those instruments. We know when I was first reading about Strumenti, it was a really intriguing idea because it's kind of like you're investing in a part of an instrument. So let's say you have a $300,000 instrument and you invest $20,000 in that investment. That makes you a part owner of that specific instrument. So let's take a look at what Strumenti is and why you may care in investing in Strumenti. According to their website, their goal is to allow people to invest in rare stringed instruments. And this is not for, you know, tubas and brass or woodwind instrument. This is specifically just for string instruments. And by doing so, you help impact the career of a musician who cannot afford a rare instrument. It seems like a win-win situation when you first look at it. You know, people can invest in an instrument and musicians who are in need of a high caliber instrument to help them get to the next level of their career, they can, you know, apply on the website and they can try to get an instrument for them to play on on a certain amount of years. That's not really specified on the website for how long you can keep an instrument. And Strumenti thinks of this as a long-term investment. So this is not like a get rich quick scheme. This seems to be like a legitimate investing opportunity for someone who wants to diversify their portfolio outside of the stock market. Because Strumenti argues that instruments have actually increased in value and have showed not too big of a dip in the value of those instruments. That's just because violins and these string instruments are part of what's known as the luxury item market and it kind of has its own trajectory compared to the stock market and the stock market actually decreased while instruments increase so it's kind of a funny investment if you really think about it but if you are familiar with instruments you know about these name values and these brands and these makers then this could be something that you're interested in you know something that you have passion for like classical music so the qualifications to invest in this kind of venture is you have to have a minimum of $10,000 in this investment. And you have to keep this investment for a minimum of five years. So this is not like an investment for like the common man. You need to have $10,000 of upfront capital just to be able to be considered for an investment of an instrument. On the plus side though, if you're a musician looking for a good instrument and you meet you know, the application requirements on their website, instrumenti.com, 
you know, you could be playing on a very nice instrument and you'd be responsible for insurance, I'm sure. You know, it doesn't say again on the website, this is just me speculating and just kind of guessing. This is also similar to what I think about the real estate market. The real estate market has only increased in value. You know, if you own a home outright, or we have a mortgage, right? Then, you know, you see the real estate prices of a home, especially within the last three years, simply go up because you have a lack of inventory of these houses. This That's what makes Stradivari, Guaneri, Amati, Vion Violin so rare is because there isn't another Stradivari out there and there are only like a limited amount of these violins out there. So as a result, the, the value of these violins increase over time because there hasn't been another Stradivari since Stradivari. So when you look at the real estate market, the real estate market, you know, the increase of the value has gone up. There was only one dip in history in modern time, and that was the crash of 2008 recession in the United States, where home values actually dipped a dramatic amount. So that was, you know, not so good during that time in 2008. But you see instruments you know, increasing in value over that time, despite that 2008 recession. You can look at the purchase of an instrument in two separate categories. One could be the purchase of a, a living maker of an instrument or one of a maker that is no longer around. So let's say for instance, we I wanna buy a violin for you know, $10,000 right now from a living maker. That value, you know, because of inflation, because of cost of materials, you know, minimum wage spikes and everything, that that value will increase naturally over time. You'll never see a decrease in value when it comes to these instruments. So that is what Strumenti is really trying to argue, that you're actually maintaining your investment and having a slow rate of return throughout a longer period of time. On the other hand, let's say you have a violin that is made from a maker that is no longer with us, and all of a sudden that instrument is one of a kind. So usually those kinds of violins go into auction, and then those auction numbers continue to rise and increase and increase over time. And you never see a violin or very rarely do you see a violin that will go uh, dip in value um, from like a previous auction. Usually the auction has like a starting price and then you would continue seeing an increase over time. Depending on the, you know, the historical context of the instrument, of course, I'm not a violin dealer. I'm not a violin salesperson. So, you know, I might be butchering some of the information. And um, if you are a violin dealer or if a violin salesperson, I want you to contribute to this conversation because I feel like it's kind of relevant into your industry as well. And I want to get your thoughts on it. So it seems to be like a win-win situation. Of course, I'm sure that Strumenti has to earn some kind of money, you know, through like commission fees or whatever, if you decide to invest, that's also not really specified on the website. So if you are investing in a 10,000, minimum $10,000, you know, I'm sure that there are some fees as if it was like a mutual fund, you know, when you invest in a mutual fund, there are, you know, maintenance fees just to be able to maintain the fund and to get different stocks into this fund. And I'm curious as to if that's going to be the same thing in this kind of payout structure for how Strumenti makes money, how the investor, you know, tries to, you know, get a return on their investment and how musicians are able to get access to these kinds of instruments. Leave your comments down below. What are some of your thoughts on Strumenti.com? I want to get this conversation started. And if you haven't subscribed, my name is Eric. I'm a violinist. Subscribe for more violin videos and check out the next video on the channel, which is going to be right over here or check out a playlist right over here for your next viewing.